The RTX 5070 Ti is here, though much like the other 50 series cards, availability is a bit of a sore subject. And even then, pricing comes into the mix and just shakes things up even more. If, however, you're dead set on getting a 5070 Ti, it will likely come down to what model you can get on the day. Though, arming yourself with the relevant information about each model of card from each brand can definitely do you favours if knowing a particular SKU is right for you or not. And that, well, brings us to today, where we're taking a look at the MSI Ventus 3X OC model to delve into the cooler, its potential in terms of keeping temperatures under control, keeping those sustained levels of boost clock, and seeing how far things can be pushed through overclocking. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. It's running hot. How do I don't know if it's safe? Get the Wireview Pro. The Wireview Pro safeguards your graphics card with real-time power and temperature monitoring, acoustic alarms for custom thresholds, and sensor pin detection to ensure proper 12VH PWR connection. External sensors can monitor additional components like memory or voltage regulators, while an OLED display provides instant insights, meaning that this is the last time you'll blow a 12VH PWR connector, soldier. To keep your system protected, click the link in the description below. Now, when it comes to the 5070 Ti, the MSI Ventus 3X OC is an interesting one, as it's meant to be an MSRP-based card, meaning that it's meant to hit the $749 price tag. Though, as history has kind of taught us, with a GPU that's meant to be one thing, generally ends up being another. But that's not the interesting part. Instead, what shines out about this card is that it's a triple fan SKU with a pre-factory overclock, and MSI aren't charging any extra for it. Though, that's not to say that retailers aren't taking the opportunity to, you know, increase things themselves. That aside, the 3X OC is a pre-factory overclock card. But sadly, in reality, we're only talking a little over 1%. So really, it's kind of neither here nor there. As to me, that comes across as more of a, let's say, marketing exercise than actually offering anything substantial. Maybe brands should be held to maybe a little higher scrutiny by consumers and not allowed to refer to a GPU being classed as an OC model unless it comes in at least, say, 5% higher, for instance. Either way, the... Uh, <clears throat> overclock does mean that the boost clock now comes in at 2,482 megahertz, opposed to 2,452, while the memory remains the same at 1750 megahertz or 28 gigabit per second effective. Though I'm confident that we can get these clocks quite a bit higher, especially with a triple fan cooling solution that should assist us along the way. So, speaking of the cooler, that's essentially what MSI have focused on with the Ventus 3X OC. It's not the... Uh, most premium cooler on the market, but it sets out to do a job. And well, this will be the last time that I say at an uh, <clears throat> affordable price. That means we get three Torx 5.0 fans, which are said to increase airflow by 23% compared to axial-based fans, along with double ball bearings to help increase the longevity of the fans, even after years of intense gaming. The fans also stop when temperatures are low, which in turn reduces noise in your system and will again increase the lifespan overall. Now the card does feature, according to MSI, a nickel-plated copper base plate, which makes direct contact with the GPU's core and the GDDR7 VRAM modules to effectively transfer the heat into the square-shaped heat pipes to help expel heat away from the core components. And with the three fans effectively pushing air towards the rear of the card, the large cutout allows that hot air to pass directly through. The card is, for the most part, plastic, though the backplate is made from metal, which aims to increase the structural rigidity of the card, though there will be some benefits in terms of thermal dissipation, though it is clear that that's not the end goal, though it does add, a, I guess, a slight premium feeling to the card. There's also a reinforced metal brace that again looks to enhance the rigidity of the card and increase its durability, so there's definitely... I guess a big focus on quality and making sure that every element of the card should last, at least in theory. Now, in terms of the size, it's not the biggest card on the planet. Being a 5070 Ti, you also wouldn't expect it to be. 
It measures in at 303 millimeters long, 121 millimeters tall, and 49 millimeters thick, making it slightly thicker due to the cooler shroud than two slots. It also comes packed with a small but novel anti-sag bracket, which I guess isn't the best that we've seen, but also isn't the worst. And while it's not made from metal and feels like something that could be 3D printed, it does the job. And it's something you'll realistically only have to install once and then kind of just leave it in place. Now, I will say that if you're after the glitz and the lights, then this card won't be for you. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not an ugly card by any means with its mixed materials and different colors, but there's no RGB to be seen. And this obviously helps to keep the cost down over other models. If you do want that, then MSI have other models in their 50 Ti stack. But again, you're gonna be paying for those features. Though that typically means that you will be getting a higher overclock among other key features as well. Beyond that, we still have a single 12 volt 2x6 connector to provide the 300 watts of power to the card. And it's recommended to have at least a 750 watt power supply for your system if you are running a 5070 Ti. Though as always, depending on the rest of your system specs, you may wanna go a little higher to give you that kind of extra headroom in the future. So to look at, at least on paper, the Ventus seems to tickle the right boxes, especially being a 5070 Ti caliber of card. And well, there being no founders model, you're instead going to be relying on getting the best bang for your buck, especially if you're looking at MSRP levels of pricing, whatever that even means these days. Sure, you can get something bigger and potentially better, but you're gonna be paying for it too. And that typically means RGB, dual BIOS switches, and of course, bigger overclocks. Now, speaking of overclocks, that's one area worth looking at because, well, these Blackwell-based GPUs do have quite a lot of headroom in them, which is, I guess, a little bit odd given that NVIDIA are literally leaving performance on the table. But I guess if you know what you're doing, then you can at least get that sense of being able to push the card harder yourself. It's here where we managed to increase the clock speed of the card by a pretty staggering 700 megahertz. We did try 710 megahertz to see if we could go any further, but that did leave us with a software crash. And while we could fine tune it into single digit increments, it wouldn't really equate to anything substantial anyway. That aside, we did manage to push our memory by 375 megahertz, which equates to another 3000 megahertz effective speed. Now to see what this overclock does for the general performance of the card, and more importantly, to make sure things are 100% stable, we booted up F124 for an hour long loop to check how the temperatures, fan speed, power usage, and clock speed behavior were actually like. And of course, to see how it compares to the stock levels of performance too. In terms of the temperatures, not really much change from stock with a single degree difference in the GPU temperature, while the memory junction remained around the same level at 65 degrees. The overclock did manage to push our GPU clock a little higher, averaging around 2,835 megahertz, which is a modest 6% increase in terms of real world clock speed. Though we did see that 3,000 megahertz jump in the effective memory clock now at 17,001 megahertz. Now being a triple fan card, we didn't really see any increase in fan speed, and instead it stayed around the low to mid 1600 RPM mark, all while using around 270 watts of power, even when overclocked. Now when looking at how this translates to actual gaming performance, in a play tale we found that the overclock did manage to give us another 9% in the averages, and a healthier 13% in the lows, which now puts the 5070 Ti Ventus 3X slightly ahead of the 7900 XTX from AMD by 3%, and leads the 4080 Super now by a 7% margin. In Black Myth Wukong, the overclock makes for quite a substantial difference with a near 20% increase in performance over the stock results. Though with frame rates around 50 FPS, these percentages may seem artificially inflated compared to when you're talking triple digit performance. So take from that what you will. Regardless, again, this is enough to push ahead of the 7900 XTX from AMD and the 4080 Super from last generation, and now matches the stock 5080 results, though it does fall behind in the lows. In Cyberpunk, again, it does make a difference, this time with an increase of 11% when overclocking the card, and this again pushes ahead of the 4080 Super, though it does fall behind AMD's 7900 XTX this time by 3 FPS. But I guess it's nice to see that a quick overclock can lead to some pretty decent gains overall without too much effort. In Indiana Jones, the performance boost is more modest with just a 6% increase in performance when overclocked, now giving us 87 frames per second. But again, this is enough to push past the 4080 Super and sit just below the RTX 5080 Founders Edition's stock results.
In Starfield, the performance at stock was pretty strong at 75 FPS, sitting between the 4070 Ti Super and RTX 4080. Though, this time, the overclock didn't really seem to do too much, as we only saw less than a 3% uplift thanks to the overclock, which did, well, nothing for our stand-ins, with both the stock and overclock results now sitting at similar levels. Moving back to Black Myth Wukong, but this time enabling ray tracing, and it's clear to see how taxing this game really is, even on a card like the 5070 Ti, as we're now into the realms of what would be classed as unplayable frame rates, and upscaling would need to be relied on to run these quality settings. Regardless, we do see an increase of 4%, though this does only equate to just, well, one frame per second, and both the stock and overclock results see identical 1% lows. It's a similar story in Cyberpunk with, well, pretty dire frame rates to start with, showing that upscaling tech is very much needed because even our overclock, which does give us a 9% increase in performance, only translates to a 2 FPS increase in performance, again with identical 1% lows. So, for the 5070 Ti Ventus 3X OC, it's a tricky one, as we don't have a founder's model to compare to, but that's typical for this level of card, as Nvidia have never made an FE model in this tier. So, Really, we have to treat the Ventus 3 XOC a bit like a Founders, of which we did in our main 5070 Ti coverage, which you can go and check out. Today, however, was less about what Nvidia have done and more about kind of what MSI have accomplished through overclocking, style and design, and the all-important cooler. It's here where, though we don't have comparisons yet, it does fare well. Temperatures were kept under control, fan speed was on the lower end of the scale, and no unnecessary power was used throughout testing. And that's exactly what we'd expect from MSI on a card like this that offers a no-frills approach for gamers who just want to, well, game, and who just want to focus on that without any extra added features that come in and, and, well, extra added price. The big issue with this card is, and well, it's not specific to this, but much like the rest of the 50 series, we are somewhat limited by availability and pricing. I mean, if you're dead set on getting a 5070 Ti, the choice may come down to what's in stock rather than what's best in class. But at least the Ventus offers a solid cooling solution and some overclocking potential at what should be MSRP, if retailers don't inflate the price, of course. Despite the uh, OC branding, the factory overclock is essentially negligible, making it more of a marketing move than a real performance differentiator. That said, the card does have strong overclocking headroom, as we showed with a 700 MHz boost to the core clock and an effective 3000 MHz increase on the memory, allowing for some significant gains in select titles. Other titles, maybe not so much. Thermally, the triple fan setup proves, well, effective. It kept the card at respectable temperatures even under heavy load. The base plate and that heat pipe design clearly work well to dissipate heat, while the fans remained relatively quiet and efficient, which I guess is what people actually want. Despite pushing power consumption to 270 watts under overclock conditions, the fan speeds remained steady and temperatures barely increased, showing that MSI's cooling design does do its job, well, effectively. The addition of the metal bat plate, while not primarily for cooling, does add, I guess, a slight premium feel and does provide that structural rigidity, preventing PCB sag over time. Though with no thermal pads, cooling does take a bit of a back seat, and in my opinion, it would have been nice to see something extra there. Though, as this is, I guess, a no-frills option, if you're after a more kind of visually striking card or extra enthusiast-grade features like that, MSI do have something for you there with higher-end cards. Though again, as I've warned you time and time again, you will have to pay for those extras. It's uh, just the way that it goes. That said, if you simply want a well-cooled 5070 Ti at a reasonable price, in my opinion, the Venta still makes a very compelling argument, assuming that you can get it at MSRP. Because as we said in our main review, if it's above that, well, it kind of loses its edge. Ultimately, while the Ventus 3 XOC is a good option, it doesn't necessarily stand out from the crowd in any meaningful way. The lack of an actual Founders Edition for the 5070 Ti actually makes AIB models the only choice, but that also means pricing plays a major role. And again, at $749, it's fine. But if retailers push it higher, well, yeah, it, then it just becomes a much, much harder sell. So there you go. That's going to wrap up this review. If you enjoyed the video, then a like and a sub to the channel would be greatly appreciated. And if you want to check out some cool behind the scenes content, exclusive game nights and early access to what we're working on, then we do have our Patreon where it also helps support everything that we do here at eTechnics. The link is as always down below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.